So hey everyone, my name is Myron. I'm a wedding filmmaker and colorist from Metro Detroit. And since I've had the XH2S, the only thing or nearly the only thing I've been getting asked was how's the autofocus? I mean, they don't care if it shoots 6.2K, ProRes RAW externally, ProRes 422 internally, they do not care. 4K 120, they do not care. All everyone seems to care about is how's the autofocus? Well, today I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you two real world examples how I use autofocus during weddings. And honestly, this is the first wedding I shot with the XH2S and I haven't touched the autofocus settings at all. So what you see is what you get straight out of camera. So if you like the look of these two clips or examples, I'll leave a link below where you can purchase the look. It's only $9. And honestly, if you're shooting weddings, this can be one heck of an investment for you because this will help take your weddings to the next level as far as color grading or it could just help you overall. Now, if you have any questions about how I graded this, please feel free to leave a comment below or just hit me up on my social media. So I hope you guys enjoy these two clips and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace. Um, for those of you that I have not had the chance to meet yet, my name is Caitlin. Um, Candace and I have been best friends um, since high school. And I have to say how absolutely stunning you look tonight. You're the most beautiful bride. And I really also want to thank um, your guys' parents, Mr. and Mrs. Mack, Mrs. Halliwell. You guys have been phenomenal throughout all of this. Thank you for all of your help and all of your planning. And Candace, you're done. The planning is done. It looks great. It's been the best day. It really has. Um, so since Candace and I have known each other for most of our lives, uh, we've had so many wonderful memories together um, between high school dances and our spring break trips, which have been uh, questionable, to say the least, um, and all of our girls' nights. Um, thank you for always letting me be your guys' third wheel. <laughs> thank you for constantly keeping me entertained, especially at work, with all of the reels and the memes on Instagram. Thank you for always being down for a girls' night and for our sushi dates. Thank <laughs> Thank you for getting me addicted to Caesar salad kits. Because no matter what we're doing, there's always Caesar salad. And thank you for being my best friend. So Brad, the first time I met you, I think you said about four words. You had, you had me tricked. I thought you were this quiet, shy guy. It's not true at all. Not true. Um, but thank you for making her the happiest I've ever seen her. You guys truly bring out the best in each other. I love the silliness and the goofiness and how happy and how much you smile when you're together. Thank you for making her be her true authentic self when you guys are together. So today starts the new chapter of your life and I'm so excited to watch the two of you and where these next years will go. Um, but last, before we make a toast, Brad, put your hand on top of Candace's look into each other's eyes, take in the moment. And Brad, this will be the first and last time you have the upper hand. <laughs> so if you guys could all please raise your glasses to the newlyweds. Cheers. This was a new beginning for Cheryl and I. To be parents of a daughter seemed a bit overwhelming, but anticipation for her life and our relationship helped overcome our fears. Candace became daddy's girl on the day she was born and has always been a princess to me. You may know she's my sweet pea. Today we stand at another new beginning as Candace and Brad start a new family. Like me, they are probably filled with a feeling of being a little overwhelmed, but those feelings will melt away as they anticipate their new life together and as they build a relationship that will stand the test of time. This day takes me back to the last occasion that I was called upon to say a few words at a wedding. It was 30 years ago this November and it was my wedding to Candace's mother Cheryl. I recall being totally lost for anything of consequence to say. I'm conscious that Candace is sitting here in fear and trepidation of what I'm about to say about the embarrassing tales that I might tell of her early years. I could talk about her breaking the childproof locks that I spent hours fitting to the kitchen cabinets, or how she squirted the formula from her bottle at the carpet salesman that was trying to con us. 
I shall perhaps disappoint you all and refrain from recalling any such incidents. But this also leaves me short for material. Of course, I could talk all night about how proud we are of Candice's achievements. Candice filled her room with trophies and medals. We drove her and Quinton all over the country to soccer games and track meets. As they um, both made us proud, putting many new people on board. I have to admit though that the athleticism is a trait they most likely inherited from their mother. Thinking of her mother, last March when Brad proposed to Candice in San Francisco, I'm not sure who was more excited, Candice or Cheryl. And thinking of her speed reminds me of how she would come out to the racetrack with me. Not many dads get to spend the weekends with their daughter at the racetrack and everyone spoke about how she drove like she was sponsored. You can wonder why. So this is an important day for me, as Cheryl and I resuscitate our bank account and hand over Candice's spending habits to Brad. So, jokes aside, we are of course proud of her graduating twice from OU and holding a position that affords her all the nice things that she likes. As I look at this beautiful woman before us, in the lovely wedding gown. I can't help but reflect on the girl she was and the woman she has become. Today she has joined hands with a wonderful young man. We must applaud Laurie and Ken for raising such a fine gentleman. In addition to the sparkle I've always seen in Candace's eyes, today I see love and joy there beyond anything I've seen before. She and Brad today have completed each other as they become a new family unit. So Brad, you know Candace only likes the best, and she doesn't settle for second. She's always been my quality inspector for anything I do around the home or with the cars, and she can be really picky. But this should speak loudly to you, Brad, that she has picked you to spend the rest of her life. I need to mention Laura, sitting over there. She had the foresight to introduce Candace to Brad. They had a date set up at a sushi restaurant in Troy. And before leaving the house that afternoon, Candice was in two minds as to whether she should bother to go out. Somehow, I think it was the right decision. When I first met Brad, I was most impressed by his politeness. And later that year, when he joined us in Florida over the 4th of July, he fitted in as if he had always been part of our family. Brad, you bring out the best in Candice, which makes us happy that you've chosen each other. And I can rely on you to accompany me when I need to meet a stranger in a mall parking lot to count out cash after selling my car. Brad, as I said to you when you asked for a hand in marriage, we are not losing a daughter or gaining a son-in-law, but adding another son to the family. Welcome to the Mac family. Remember though, remember though that she may have a ring on her finger, but she'll always be my little girl. So when I think of marriage, I think of the way in which the Bible portrays it. It begins with a creational ordinance of Genesis 2.24, showing that marriage is not just a man-made invention devised during the 17th century or at some other time in history. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. So as you start a new family unit, you have put a fresh branch in the family trees of the Hollywells and the Max. This is tradition at the time when fathers give advice to the young couple. I could talk about how Brad should prepare breakfast on, in bed on the first morning of their honeymoon, and then I would say, see, that's how it's done. Try that for 60 years, not me. My advice is much simpler, it is this. Live Ephesians 5, the greatest description of marriage to be found anywhere. Verse 22, wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. And if that's unrealistic and too old fashioned, then consider verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. These are not just pretty aspirational statements. They are commands to be followed. May God grant you both the wisdom, energy, and determination to do just that. So I'm going to ask that you all rise and stand for a toast to the new couple.